Sure, let's trust someone who gets called Dr. Death. That won't bite us in the ass. In the meantime, I'll see what I can learn from the new CPU we acquired from that infiltrator. This could be the breakthrough that we've all been waiting for. I need to concentrate, so please don't disturb me. What do you need? Uh, anything I should know about Dr. Mac before I leave? Only that he can't be trusted and he's highly manipulative. So you need to stay cautious. Was Mac the one whose drone you smashed? Yes. Yes, it was. I've never told this to anyone, but... Before I met Mac and Perry, I was wandering alone. Didn't have a map, so I drew one myself. The first people I came across were two guys. Old enough to remember Judgment Day. We camped out together. They gave me advice, we shared some stories. Sounds nice, right? A little too good to be true. It was. I was too naive to notice it back then. When I woke up, all my things were gone, including my map. There I was, lost in the desert. Thirst and hunger. I knew I was gonna die. I passed out with my face in the sand. But next thing, I was lying in a bed, bathed and wearing clean clothes. You're lucky someone found you. Someone did find me. Too bad it was Skynet. Through the window, I saw thousands of Terminators. First, I thought it was a work camp. But it was something else. A Skynet research facility. They kept me alive, but I didn't know why. I thought I was the only human there. But after a while, someone came into my cell. A man. Well-dressed, clean-shaven. You want to take a guess who that was? An infiltrator. In a way. He was a traitor to his race. Bastard was selling every piece of knowledge the machines didn't have. In return, they gave him everything he wanted. When he was done stuffing his face with food, he had another request. He wanted a whore. It lasted months until I got to wrap a towel around his neck and make his eyes pop. You don't want to see people for what they really are. I've seen their true face. That traitor, those two guys in the desert, Mac, they all showed it to me. It's not pretty. The truth is, the only reason I fight for the Resistance is because I despise people just a little less than the machines. Jacob, do you have a minute? Of course. I've heard that you're going to Hollywood Hills. Well, with Baron yelling like that, the whole shelter heard. He wanted me to tell you if I needed anything, so here it is. When you get to Hollywood Hills, could you stop by my old house? It's near the Griffith Park tennis courts. I wonder if Peter went there and left something for me. I know he'd be stupid to go there since now it's behind the Annihilation line, but then again, he was always full of stupid ideas. I'll see what I can do. Thank you. Look at him. He never talks to anyone. He just sits there. I bet he's one of those machines. Jacob, I didn't see you there. Where are you going? I'm going out scavenging. Don't worry. I'm past thinking about running away. Knowing how much you'd miss me made me not want to leave. Where's Patrick? He's getting ready. I'm taking him with me. I figure it's time for him to see what's out there. Is there something on your mind? Actually, I have a secret to tell you. You have a fan. Patrick really looks up to you. It's good for him to have a role model. And I don't think he could have chosen better. Thank you. It means a lot. Are you kidding? It's the least I can do for helping us all this time. If you hadn't found us back in Pasadena, 
I don't know what would have happened. Well, actually, I do. Exactly what the others said would happen. People were talking about the Annihilation Line months before it came. My father, of course, tried to turn it all into a joke. But what did you think about it? I didn't know what to think. Travelers would bring all sorts of gossip with them. But this kept coming back. When Patrick asked me if I was scared, I lied and said that I wasn't. You could feel the mood change at the house. The community my father tried to build started falling apart. Fewer and fewer people were coming by. And if they did, they weren't always friendly. We started to notice things going missing. Little things at first. People got nervous. And with time, it even got to my father. Did it ever get to you? Of course it did. For the first time in my life, there were only the three of us at the house. After a while, my father changed the sign from welcome to beware. He put a lock on the door and started carrying a shotgun. I didn't even know he owned a gun. He always said he didn't believe in them. I wanted us to leave our house and run, but he didn't want to listen. Said it was the only place he could keep us safe. Thanks for letting me spill my guts like that. Is everything okay? You seem far away. <clears throat> Nothing can get past you, can it? I've been thinking about the day we met. I never told you how we really ended up there. You can tell me anything. I know I can. That's why you're the first person I'm telling this to. That day, loud hammering woke me up. When I came downstairs, I saw my father nailing the window shut. Through the crack, I saw them coming. Hundreds of metal heads and their red eyes. Even though they're just empty shells, I could feel the hate radiating from them. What did you do? I made Patrick stay upstairs and went back to talk to my father. We argued for a minute or two and I tried to pull him away from the window. He pushed me away. I tried it again, but he shoved me. This time I fell. I didn't recognize him as he was reaching for a shotgun. He said, I shouldn't worry about the machines. They wouldn't hurt us. I don't even remember how. But the gun was already in my hands. I closed my eyes and went someplace else. Didn't even hear the shot. I didn't hear Patrick's steps either. Did you lose consciousness? Uh, I guess I did for a moment. It was the taste of blood on my lips that woke me from my trance. I threw the gun away, grabbed Patrick, and tried not to notice the hole in my father's unmoving chest. As we ran, I could hear them coming, so we found somewhere to hide. And you came. I wanted to tell someone about all this, but I was afraid to. You don't have to be afraid. I'm not. Not anymore. We talk a lot about how heartless the machines are. And I started to think that maybe I was too. I probably would have convinced myself of that if it wasn't for you keeping me sane. Thank you for everything. I never thought I would find a friend in times like these. Is it, is it, is it true? Are you human now? Or well, what's with the dog? <laughs> They've been like that ever since they brought that.
You're alive. No time for that. Do whatever it takes to get everyone out of that shelter. Do you understand? They're not safe there. What? Why? God damn it. What does he mean? Get everyone out of the shelter? That camera. Dr. Mac, is that you? The Resistance needs your help. Mac! It would be a shame to lose that camera. Now, why would you do that? Because we don't have time for this. Come out here. Skynet has developed a new Terminator model, the Infiltrator. You've seen one already? We've captured one, and we need your help. Are you there? How do I know you're not an infiltrator? You've seen them. You know how incredibly lifelike they are, so you should understand my concerns. Head up that hill. If you want me to help you, you have to take a test for me. Test? Yes to determine whether you're a Terminator or not. And be careful, I'm watching you. Trying to fight you? Very clever way to make me think that you're not one of them. Unfortunately for you, I'm not that easily fooled. We don't have time for any of this. Just tell me where you are. I am not a robot. Living tissue would make you a cybernetic organism, not a robot. Words have meaning. Conversations between human beings would be a lot easier if we all just trusted each other and understood the deeper meaning of what we said. during this test. This mansion is filled with Terminators. They've been trying to find me for a while now, all eight of them. Well, I guess with you in there, that makes it nine.
Patience is wearing thin. Why am I even here? Here? On the stage, you mean? Um, because I wanted you to recite a poem. That's right. That's why I got you on this stage. To invoke the fear of public speaking in you. This will allow me to check your emotional response. Very important in these sort of tests. So, if you could go ahead and recite a poem. Why? Why? You know, machines are incapable of having a creative thought, so... You're very inquisitive. I don't know whether that's good or not. Oh, now wait, and be quiet! They regularly patrol this area. Don't let them see you. So you know I'm not a Terminator? Of course I do. They are way better shots than you. Then why are you making me do all this? <sighs> because I want you to grab something for me before I help you. Turn left when you leave the theater. There you'll find a plane crash site. My spider scout should be stuck somewhere around. Just grab it and bring it back to me in one piece. Skynet completely took over this place. I could do something about that. I've got it. Good job. I'm in my vault in one of the buildings up the street. Meet me there.
locker. Where would I find a locker nearby? That's the locker room. I hope it's not you, Peter.
This is it. I know it looks tempting, but please do not destroy that plasma container. It powers this whole laboratory. Sorry for making you run around like that. But because of the recent increase in Terminator patrols, I couldn't get to that spider scout myself. Can I see it? Thank you. I have a gift as a token of my appreciation. While you were out looking for my spider scout, I used some leftover parts to make a new radio for you. I've been picking up your signal for a while now, and I imagine that Skynet has as well. So, I've made it harder to decipher. You won't have to worry about them eavesdropping. You've been listening, so you know why I'm here. Yes. Now, let me see that gun. What a beauty. I've got to tell you, if Skynet wasn't so gung-ho about killing everything... <laughs> what's interesting about it is that the matter inside is far more condensed. That way, it releases more energy on discharge, dealing much more damage. And also, its plasma blast is violent, so that's different. Can you bypass the encryption lockout so we can use it? Alvin couldn't. Alvin couldn't bypass an egg timer if his life depended on it. I'll do it, but it's not that simple. First, you'll have to bring me Skynet's latest security codes. Security codes? They will allow us to access Skynet's mainframe. But they change them regularly, so I need you to connect to any HK unit and download the newest security codes. To do that, you'll need my code reader. When I was... Excused from the shelter, they made me leave all my equipment behind. Alvin should have my code reader. Okay, is that everything? As far as the security codes go, yes. Then I'm moving out. Actually, I've got a question about that infiltrator that you have there. Is it intact? Or more specifically, its neural net CPU? I've been hacking Skynet's units, and I'm noticing similarities in their patterns. I think I'm ready to reprogram the CPU from that infiltrator. It's more powerful than any other. Should I ask Baron about that, too? No, 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 she can't know about it. She would not approve. I know how this sounds, but you need to steal it for me. What? I'm the only one that can reprogram that chip. For some reason, Skynet has started to learn at a geometric rate. We need to prepare ourselves for whatever's coming, and I believe that having an infiltrator on our side will give us the advantage. Just think about it. Commander. Rivers, what's the status? Max alive. He will help us, but he needs a device he left at the shelter. All right, we can do that. Report to me when you get back. Over and out.